My name is Kuju Yangsen. Let me tell you how to turn back time. You can now bring back all the fun, all the excitement, all the controversy of the Super Morning Show and all your favorite joy shows when you go to myjoyonline.com forward slash podcasts. Just select your favorite show and bring it all back again. Joy 99.7 FM, radio for discerning listeners. Radio, radio, Joy 99.7. All right, this is the AM show, and it's with me, uh, Israel, and Enimwa. We actually, there was a, a photo that was posted. We took a photo together, and we posted it on, on Facebook, on our social media <laughs> handles. I don't know if you've seen it. <sighs> I want you to go. Okay. What about it? Nothing. It's a beautiful <laughs> photo, but yeah, yeah. as usual, you're spoiling my market. Oh, no. But I am okay. not. You are so are, Israel. So, so spoiling my market. Really? Yes. Should you and out? every other no, man no. in my life constantly spoiling my market. Should we put it out there for people to vote whether, you know, I am spoiling, spoiling your market, market or if I am spoiling it. your market? <laughs> I don't have any market to be spoiled. So, yeah, you may have a case if you say I'm spoiling your market. That is... If the viewers agree that I'm spoiling your market, I don't think I am. I'm adding to it. I don't know about that, but okay. That's the I'm argument adding, my I'm best adding, friend. I'm adding value. My best friend makes that same argument when he introduces me to his friends as his inside room girl. Oh, no. Yeah. No, no, no. It's a term that means like my, my buddy, buddy, like insiders. Yeah, like, but that's spoiling market. That, I, I, I that's what I say all the yeah, time. Yeah, so he is spoiling your market. But you are not. No, uh, I am not. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's, let's get on to uh, Facebook and, and see what your... You've been saying about that photo, but uh, one of the conversations, uh, another conversation we're going to have whilst we wait for the graphic, uh, stamp, graphic Stand business Stambic mm -hmm. um, breakfast meeting, which is happening um, hopefully in about um, 30 minutes. It's on the theme media marketing communication, communication post COVID, post -COVID a catalyst for Africa's socioeconomic resurgence. So that's going to be happening. But before we get to that, uh, there's something that happened yesterday, the Fix the Country Convenience. And I haven't seen it in any of the papers. News they had a news nope. conference. I haven't seen it in any of the papers. But we're bringing in that story. It was on the AM News. We're bringing it back. They, um, they've started a campaign to solicit one million votes to push for the total overhaul of the Constitution of Ghana. Now, the campaigners insist the constitution in this current state favors the Ghanaian politician instead of the ordinary Ghanaian. A reason it should be changed. So the group uh, has started that movement. And there was a news conference yesterday. Let's get to hear from them. But also in part of that conversation, we have made it clear our objective is that we want, to, we want a new constitution for a new generation. A new constitution that gives economic justice to everybody that not only a few Ghanaians would enjoy at the expense of all of us. And that process of getting a new constitution, we are called for a vote of no confidence in the 1992 constitution. And we have laid out the framework from which we are going to get Ghanaians to sign up to that. And so this process was also showing Ghanaians how they can reach out to us. And we are seeing a lot of Ghanaians across the country that if you send any WhatsApp message to 0549 214976, We'll give you the link of how you can also sign up and demand for a constitution that gives you justice. A constitution that ensures that politicians are not the only most paid or highest paid individuals in this country. But Ghanaians find jobs, irrespective of where you are, irrespective of what job you do, you would also go home knowing that this country also serves you too. So that's the process that we are engaged in. This is about fixing the country. This is fix the country, not fix Accra. And so it was important for us after the first demonstration where a lot of Ghanaians came out. First of all, to recognize the, the, the efforts of so many Ghanaians who showed up. But also importantly, to make it known our framework for engaging all other parts of the country. And so this is about announcing the next demonstration, which is happening in Takrade. Well, for us, we are going to Takrade because that's the home region of Kwame Nkrumah. And we are doing so on the 21st of September. For us, a lot of people assume that the support is the 15,000 people we brought out in Accra. And so if we don't see 15,000 in Takrade, it means that Ghanaians are not listening. There were 1.5 million people who were watching the demonstration live on air. All of those people cannot, were not in the street. And so if people continue to bear support for things the country and what Ghanaians are saying and coming together, on just the 15,000 that showed up in Accra or the number of people who showed up in Takrade, then you have lost the significance of this moment. 
All right, so we have uh, Oliver Bakavomo, who's one of the conveners of the Fix the Country movement. He's joining us on Zoom right now. Good morning to you, Mr. Uh, Vomowo, and uh, thank you for making time to speak with us. Now, is it just me, or there was very little coverage of the, the news conference you had yesterday in the newspapers? I've seen, uh, I know it's the electronic media and on radio has been covered, widely but yeah. it turned out that um, i'm not seeing it in the in any of the newspapers unless you've seen it and uh, i haven't do you know any of the newspapers are covered it well we've come to realize that the newspapers are not friends of us particularly oh uh, i remember in what, the what is it of... that you did to them <laughs> i remember in the aftermath of what happened in nigeria the daily graphic carried uh, a story of an opening of of vehicles in in uh, and cutting sword for vehicles. And I was wondering, in one of the biggest tragedies in our democracy, you have to flip to almost the back page to be able to find a snippet of that story. Yeah. And, and it is one of the reasons why we entered into a democratic space, that the liberalization of the media space would allow folks like you, Joy FM and other media platforms, would be able to engage Ghanaians in a different conversation that is often, you know, not often given adequate coverage and, and, and substance in, in the written media. So I'm happy to engage uh, folks like you who's, who always have your finger on the pulse and know where the credible news and, 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 and the right news to be covered is, is coming from. All right. So one thing I, I like about the conversations we're having is that, you know, reviewing the Constitution is not a partisan thing. Reviewing the Constitution yeah. is something that, in fact, we've had several presidents talk about it. And we have actually attempted to review the constitution, except that we haven't implemented, we haven't come around to implementing it. So there's been a process. Why do you want to start something new? You know, one of the reasons why we have talked about a new constitution for a new generation, and not going back to those language of a review or piecemeal amendment, is because we have come, we have a certain historical understanding of why the process has failed in the past. And one of the reasons why it has been very difficult for people to understand why that shift to a new constitution is important is precisely the reason why we are not getting any movement. And then in taking on the burden of, of staying a new constitution, we also want to engage and, and, and uh, educate Ghanaians about what it means in practice. Because politicians have created a, a fear factor around the word new or a renewal, a rebirth of what Ghana means to people. And we want to do that. And I'll take briefly some time to explain this to you. And when the Constitution Review Commission finished and, and produced a thousand page, over a thousand page report, there were more than 360 significant constitutional changes that needed to be made. In those changes, that there was a real confusion as to whether or not when you look at the current constitution, we needed one amendment bill to address all of the issues, or that we needed several bills. The Constitution Review Commission decided that all entrenched provisions under the Constitution can take one bill, and all non-entrenched provisions will take one bill. Unfortunately, what happened was that the current government put together a committee chaired by the Attorney General, who decided that for all those substantive changes that the Constitution needed, Every change needed one bill on its own, meaning that we are potentially getting into a referendum where Ghanaians will be standing and voting on a thousand uh, amendments uh, on each of the issues. Okay. But it's impractical. And it was one of the reasons why it was one of the tools they used to stall the entire process. Now, if we understand that reviewing the Constitution can engage almost a thousand rewrites of articles in the Constitution, then we already understand that it is impractical to do that to the current document. We must enter a framework which allows us to be able to make those changes holistically and together so that the con constitution that we create has a basic a new philosophy of how it engages the people of Ghana. If we want to do patchwork, we'll end up creating much more problems than we, we currently have. All right, but the other suggestion is that let's not even do a review. The president has even said that. Let's just take one issue. And his only issue that interests him is extending partisanship to the district level. And when Ghanaians rejected that, 
They decided that, well, if you do not want it the government's way, you are not giving you anything at all. We do not want politicians to hijack the process. And the biggest risk of hijacking comes in the review conversation. But if we do a new constitution, where we take it from the consultative or constituent assembly, right to a referendum, Ghanaians have the most say in the document. That is why we've taken on this charge and burden to educate and also collect those one million signatures to support for the process. All right, so you talk about uh, fix the country movement, but here's the case where you're talking about a new constitution altogether. To me, it sounds more like reset the country rather than fix the country, because indeed, if you look at fixing in the you know, context or the definition of it, it, it suggests that you're trying to do more patchwork than you know, overhauling the system. So fix the country, reset the country, yeah. what exactly are you looking at? So, so, so a reset must have a purpose, right? The, the remedy for any problem, you have to sit down with the problem a bit more before you prescribe what remedy it needs. In this case, to be able to fix Ghana, we need a certain reset in certain dimensions. The people do not leave. But the underlying document that founds the country needs to change for that fixing process and healing process to happen. You know? And we, have, we should not be shy about it. I hear a lot of people say, but well, are you calling for a faith republic? And what does that mean? And I'm asking myself, so many of our citizens keep dying in our hospital, which, is, which are underfunded. So many of our people are being left behind by poor educational facilities. So many people live in communities which are disconnected from major areas. They cannot get their market, their farm produce to, to market. And so many people who have to cross miles to get basic education. And if our concern is about numbering, then I think we've already lost the plot, right? We, at every time in a nation's life, we have to ask ourselves, are we delivering justice to our people? Now, I have today closed my eyes under this Fourth Republic, and I've imagined 10 years down the line, and I cannot see a change in what is happening. I cannot see anything that is bringing justice to our people. I cannot see anything that is moving us on the path towards improving lives, apart from the rigmarole of both one politician and one party and the other party. We want to engage Ghanaians in a different project, a different project that creates belief that this country can deliver justice. This country can fix itself so that the citizens can believe in a different future. All right. And that job is hard. But that job must be started by people and must be started by citizens. One of the things you touched on yesterday, it's, it sounds to me like it was more like the highlight of your news conference yesterday, it has to do with something that comes in at a time when people are actually thinking that way. And it has to do with salaries. So you're talking about... Um, Article 71, office holders and their conditions of service, and then the rest of the population, which many people have already talked about, and they're saying that it's unfair and it's something that needs to be overhauled. It sounds to me like you're taking advantage of the situation. No, you know, it's interesting because we have started talking about the new constitution for a new generation for a long time now, right? And we, we understand that we have a current constitution that is not equitable. And there's so many instances of way in which that inequity in our constitution expresses itself. And it's so interesting that we've been engaging the TUC in series of meetings, even before this, they finalized the conversation and even before the labor interest broke out. All right. So we already intuitively understood the interconnections between the inequity that, is, that exists at the heart of the constitution and the problems, the way they manifest themselves. In fact, one of the things we did Israel, is that when we're meeting the TUC, we went back to the Constitution Review Commission process, and we took wholesale the submission that the organized labor had made to the Constitution Review Commission. And a lot of it revolved around Article 71 and, and, and changing the pay structure. A lot of it revolved about new institutions that brings much more equity into the workforce. And we had those conversations with them, and we told them that, listen, you guys understood the problems with the Constitution, and you asked for these changes. If you continue not to deal with the problem at the source, we will, your people are going to be continuously unhappy, and we will always be in this cyclical problems that we continue to have. You know, so it's not about taking advantage, but it's also about, but it's about showing the interconnections of how our problems affect everyone, and a lot of it comes down 
back to this document that was negotiated uh, on the brink of a, an ending uh, military rule that was holding a gun on the process and ensured for itself a deal that entrenches the same benefits within the military era for the political class. All right, so let's talk about the, the process and what you've initiated. You say you're looking for, what, one million signatures. How are you going about it? So, you know, some people think that the one million was, was chosen at random, but we didn't. Uh, first of all, when you take the entirety of the political class, including the parliament, you have only 275 people. The president makes about 6,000 appointments. All put together, you have less than 8,000 people who... 80% of our resources is servicing, okay? And we are saying that we are getting a million Ghanaians to speak up in rejection of a document that entrenches that moral corruption. Secondly, in 1992, 28th April, 50% of Ghanaian electorates boycotted the process for electing a new constitution. Only 3.6 million people voted for the document. Now, we are not chilling 1 million people. We represent more than about 30% of those people and saying to them that this document has failed. We're not stopping there. We're continuing to engage Ghanaians. Now, if less than 10,000 people, 8,000 people can look at a million Ghanaians who are speaking and say, we do not care what you're saying, I think that should ask us more questions about the democracy we have, right? Like, we should begin to wonder, is this really a democracy for the people and by the people? And we seek the welfare of the people as Article 1 of the current constitution says. All right, so how do people get to join or sign this uh, petition? So the way in which people would go about it is you can go to vote.fixthecountrygh.com. Vote.fixthecountrygh.com. All right. And, and vote and verify your process. You can also reach out to us on the WhatsApp number, which is 549 21 Seven six. I take it again. Zero five four nine two one four nine seven six. And when you do that, it will take you through a process which allows you to verify your identity and your details to be able to collect those signatures. All right. I'd want you to. And we're also going into the offline spaces as well. So in going out into the communities and sending enumerators out, we are going to be taking people's details and we use it as an opportunity to educate. And register people in offline spaces, which is very important to us as well. I want the producer to pull up uh, that website for us uh, whilst we're talking. So uh, just repeat it so that he can pull it up okay. so, so we can probably go through the vote, process. Votes.fixthecountrygh.com. Votes.fixthecountrygh.com. Dot com. Yes. All right. If we can have that app on the screen and uh, we, we'll see how, yeah. how it is going and how the process is working. Now, while at it, I also want to find out from you, there's um, the fixing the country movement that's come on the back of uh, Fix the Country. What do you have to say about that? You know, it's interesting to me that at every, I think now I've become quite used to it, in fact, Israel. In the beginning, I was very surprised about, you know, the the quick turns to counter narratives and the counter hashtags. And it's perhaps, you know, the poverty of my not having any experience in the political arena in Ghana and how, you know, politics works uh, in a way in which it disenfranchises people. But I've, I mean, I've, I've become used to it. I've, I've become, you know, used to, uh, disappointingly used to the fact that whenever you want to speak up for people and challenge this country to do better, there are groups that come up and I want to distract the conversation only interested about entrenching partisan politics and all of that and the ills of it. I've, I've lived with that. Now, I think that what I've understood is that our conversation can still take place in the, in, in the same space as the toxicity, toxicity of our partisan politics. And I shouldn't be too concerned about groups that come up and do things like that. But if you're focused on our message, Ghanaians know how to be able to, to differentiate between what is in their interest and what is not. And we are only counting on that just ethic in Ghanaians to be able to continue to give us the kind of support that they continue to do. All right. So how many um, votes have you got or petitions have you? Uh, people have, have, many people have signed the petition so far? Uh, so I, I haven't had a chance to look at the, uh, at the, at the platform now. All right. I think we uh, have it. We have it. Let's, let's, let's pull it up now. I think we have it right yeah. now. 
So let's put a, it a lot on. of people are also signing in offline spaces, which we need to be updated to the website as well. All right. Uh, so this will show us the people within the website when we launched uh, yesterday afternoon who have already signed up on the website. Okay, so that's the website. We have that on our screen. And uh, so, so today, petitions is counting on you. Petitions needs your help with vote of no confidence in the 1992 Constitution of Ghana. Join petitions and 296 supporters today. So as we have it now, I want to think that on the website, it's 296 uh, supporters, right? Yes. So you can close this and I can walk you through some of the details that to be requested. Uh, uh, with the hope that when, you, when we finish this, you will then sign for yourself. Uh, but I was going to walk you, if you close that, the one asking you to join the petition, All right. I can show you the details people need to provide. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you will see that to, to take your first name and last name, yes. it will take your email and your current location and your phone number. And it will use one of these two, whether it's the email or the phone number, to verify, to verify that it's a real person who is feeling filling this. Now, when you go to the, to come to the website, take even your hometown information and your current location as well. It allows us to do that verification process. All right. Now, one of the things which we have to have a conversation about is, is there an age limit for people who are voting for this, right? And um, I think we have decided that we're going to cap that age limit at 12, 12 years old. All right. And the reason why we do this is because under the laws of Ghana, a person can become criminally liable at 12 years old, meaning that our law says that at 12 years old, you're able to tell the difference between what is right and what is wrong. Okay. And we aggregate that data and, and show people the breakdown of ages, the breakdown of locations, the regions where they come from, and all of that to show how much of a national effort this is. But okay, uh, Mr. Bomo, well, unfortunately, we we'll have to bring the conversation to an end at this point. But you can say, I'm sure you can say that we have uh, been very kind to fix a country movement. <laughs> I think that you, you have continuously done your job in what is ethical journalism and in and, 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 and highlighting the right stories. And I appreciate the time with you. So simply put, we have done very well as opposed to <laughs> you have executed your, your mandate as journalists. He's a lawyer. Of course he is. No, I know. I know. <laughs> it's our reasonable no, service and therefore. That. I, think, I think that I want to be clear. You guys haven't done this because you want to be out of favoritism to fix the country movement. You've done your job professionally. And I appreciate professionals when they're doing their job right. And that's, that is what is important. Understood, sir. Thank you very much for your kind words. And that's Oliver Bakavomo. He's one of the conveners of Fix the Country.